As your bishop, I'd like to share some thoughts with you about the holy season of Lent. As with so many traditions in the church, Lent has evolved over the years. People began to emphasize more giving rather than giving up. The sober and serious tone of the 40 days of Lent, beginning with Ash Wednesday, became lighter and less intense. Sure, the church continued to accent the penitential nature of Lent, but it did so in different ways, stressing things that were more positive rather than negative. The obligation to sacrifice something was emphasized less as the most immediate item on the Lenten agenda. Now, I'm a great believer in the both and rather than the either or approach to life. And so for me, Lent is a holy season of penance when I feel called as a Catholic by the very nature and purpose of Lent to both give up and to give something. In my own prayer and reflection as Bishop of the Diocese, I recognize my responsibility to guide the faithful of the diocese, clergy, religious and laity alike in living out our Christian life in pursuit of holiness. Lent is a time to intensify the pursuit of holiness as we prepare to celebrate Christ's own passion, death and resurrection, the central mysteries of our Catholic faith. And so together, bishop and clergy, religious and laity, let us focus our attention on the call to holiness that is at the heart of our Lenten journey and at the heart of our life's journey. Each weekend, we profess our common belief in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I discuss these four marks of the church, as they are called, at length in my first pastoral letter as bishop. There, I reminded us of the scripture passage that says, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in every aspect of your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The church gives us the season of Lent as an aid in that process. And here's the motivation. The church's call to holiness is rooted in Christ's own invitation to be holy in imitation of him. The holiness of the church is not merely a reflection of, but rather an identification with the very holiness of God. Can the church be anything less than what God calls her to be in imitation of him? That is a strong motivation to give Lent and the growth in holiness it offers our best shot. Yes, giving up something and making sacrifices are an important part of the Lenten experience in the church. But if they don't lead us to a deeper holiness, a closer, life-altering identification with Jesus Christ and his gospel, they're empty gestures. It's like going on a diet for a while. We'll lose some weight for sure, but if we don't make up our minds to change our eating behaviors, or if we lose our motivation, the weight will only return, and then some more. Lent and its sacrifices should connect us on a deeper level with the Lord Jesus Christ, should lead us in a more profound way to a closer identification with him who suffered and died on the cross for us. Giving up, sacrifice. Every individual Catholic has to decide this Lent, what more can I do? Can I give up for him? Lent should help us say, with Christ I am nailed to the cross, and the life I live is no longer my own. It is the life of Christ who loved me and gave himself for me. And the other part of the Lenten both and equation, giving something, needs also to be addressed. As with sacrifice and penance, our Lenten giving must lead us to holiness in Jesus Christ. He is the reason why we give. 
It is his face we see in the face of others. Whatever you do for the least of my brothers and sisters, he said, you do for me. As bishop, I would like to offer a thought on something that can bring the both and of Lent together for us, and that is time. Giving up my time so that I can give my time to others and grow in holiness. Perhaps this Lent, whether we are young or old or somewhere in between, we can give some prayerful thought to time and how we can use it in our pursuit of holiness. First, give time to God. Slow it all down and make time for God in your prayer. Who could be more important than making time for the one who created us, who loves us as we are, who cares for us every moment of the day, and who promised to be with us all days, who will call us home after this life is done. I mean, really, I can make time for just about anything else. Why can't I find a little more time for God? Why can't I give up some time for Him? Go to Mass. Less than 16% of Catholics in the Diocese of Trenton go to Mass every Saturday, Sunday. What else is so important, more important, than giving up an hour or so once a week to hear God's Word, to receive Him in the Holy Eucharist, to bring our children and families to the Lord together, to reflect on what is truly important in life, and to join other Catholics in what the Second Vatican Council calls the source and summit of the Christian life. It takes time, but honestly, not that much. Can I go to the gym or exercise later? Will the mall or the grocery store still be there when I leave church? Will the things that I need or want to do around the house disappear if I go to Mass for an hour once a week? Aren't there several times each week when Mass is offered in my parish or another parish close by so that I can still do these things, these other things? Let me recommend that this Lent is a time for decision to commit ourselves to give time to God to get to church or to get back to church. Mass is not an option for the Catholic. It is an obligation, and for good reason. We're faithful to other obligations. Why not give up some time to be faithful to that one? Lent is the perfect time to reconnect. Another one, personal prayer. One of the easiest things we can give up is the distractions that push God away. Prayer isn't difficult. It's as simple as closing our eyes for a moment or two and just remembering that God is present everywhere, especially within us. God gives us everything, and we are so blessed. Stop and say thanks. We also have many challenges and concerns in our lives, things that even cause us suffering and heartache. Offer them to God and ask His guidance and help. We may feel alone at times. Remember that God is always with us. We sin. Ask God's forgiveness. Go to confession, even if it's been a long time. Why hold on to sins like there's some hidden treasures, let go of them. The old saying is on target. Live as though everything depends upon you, but pray like everything depends upon God. Say prayers that you know. Pray in your own words. Give up a little more time for God this Lent. Another thought, confession. You've heard the cliche, confession is good for the soul. Those who take advantage of the sacrament of penance or reconciliation regularly 
do so because that's true. We are all sinners, and therefore, we are all in need of the mercy and forgiveness of God. Why not give Him our sins and failings and ask Him forgiveness and mercy and healing that He alone can give? It's good for the soul. And whether it was last week, last month, during Advent or many years ago, the Lord invites us to seek Him out, to account for our sins and missteps, to express contrition and a purpose of amendment, to receive absolution at the hands of the priest and to leave the confessional or reconciliation room in the church with the burdens of our conscience lifted. Lent is a time to make a fresh start. Another idea, give time to others. Everyone is busy, everyone has things to do. But everything that we are in life, everything that we have in life bears the fingerprints of someone else, our parents, our children, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, our parishioners. Do we give them enough time? Could they use or do they really need just a little bit more of our time? The elderly, especially elderly parents or members of the family. Would it hurt to call or visit them, to give them some time? Sometimes they just want someone to listen or to talk to them as though they mattered. Is our time so important? Our children. The world in which we live is, some, live is sometimes a scary place. Our children don't come with a set of instructions. There are forces out there willing or worse, eager to drag them down, to lead them along the wrong path, alcohol drugs, sex, manipulative relationships, bullying, peer pressure, gossip, harsh judgments. A little more love and attention, a little more time could make all the difference. They may act like they don't need or want it, but trust me, they do. People we know who are sick or alone or struggling, how about a call? or a visit to them, or just making the time to sit down and write them a quick note or a letter, or even an email. Are we that busy? Too busy? It only takes a few minutes of our time. On a larger scale, have we ever thought about giving our time as a volunteer to those with special needs? Not all our time, no, but some of it, for the poor the hungry, the homeless, the sick. Lent may be the time to give time as a path to holiness. The scriptures tell us that there are two great commands, love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus Christ tells us that the command I give you is this, love one another as I have loved you. Love takes time. Are we willing to give something up out of love? Are we willing to give out of love? This Lent is the time, at least, to give an answer. And so may you have a blessed Lenten season. You will be in my prayers each and every day.